and then we'll have it on the, <laughs> the recording, you know? All right. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Okay, so do what color should we do the text in? Black. Rainbow. Rainbow? Rainbow? Okay. <laughs> it, won't, it won't let me do it. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not intolerant. It just, it won't let me do the rainbow, okay? So, all right, let's... Uh, Let's start. So I wanted to recap. The, I know this stuff is a little weird. Like, so I wanted to recap from last time. It's a little bit different. Um, the two examples, but we're going to do it really concisely. Okay, so a recap. The two examples of the different convergence. And then we're going to see where it takes us. That will be the lecture today. We'll start the new stuff next time. So this is still 9.3, really. And the stuff from the other book, if you found that. All right, so we had two examples. I'm going to write the examples here. One was U uniform uh, 0, 1, and Yn is U plus U to the N. You could make something different. Let's call this example one. And example two was U separate example, so not the same uniform or anything. U uniform 0, 1, and let's call this Xn. And this was equal to u plus an indicator function. Let's just call this nth interval. Here, I'll define it down here of u. Okay, and here are the intervals. So first interval, 0 to 1. Second, I split it in halves. Next, I split it like this. And I just keep following this pattern. Start over. I don't want to think of a formula. I'm not sure. I think we could. It's so unimportant. For this. Okay, so those are the intervals. So, right. Okay, so one thing to notice is that this piece here, this is either one or zero. This is called an indicator function either one or zero and it is a random it's a function of a random variable so it's random and it adds to this right so it's a function of this u so you roll the dice with u you get a number equally likely any number in zero to one and then if that number lands in the nth interval you set it for for xn you check the nth interval if that's in the nth interval you increase the number that u is by one so you only have this once, right? And then you build out the sequence Xn, same here. So the Xn are not IID, the Yn are not IID. Um, okay. All right. So it's weird. It's sort of separate from the statistic stuff we're doing, but it's it's important that because you should see what the definition is without just seeing how it's used first. It's more confusing actually that way. All right, so do you remember the results from last time? We have two types of convergence, and we have Xn um, goes to U or doesn't. Y, um, Yn goes to U or doesn't. Xn goes to U or doesn't. Yn goes to U or doesn't for the two types of convergence in probability or almost surely. So do you remember, like, let's... Let's think of YNs. For, for YN, did it converge to you in probability? So maybe you don't remember. This tech, we're gonna review all this right now. So we're gonna go through all four of these cases right now. It won't, it will take a little time, but hopefully it's easier this time. So YN does go to you in probability. Does YN go to you almost surely for every point? except on um, points that have no probability, basically. The answer is yes. So this one converges both ways. This one converges both ways to you. Um, these, this one, this weird one with the adding one to it, depending on where you are in the turn, this one converges in probability to you, but not, does not converge AS. Okay, and that's sort of where we stopped last time. 
was, but I was kind of rushed and I think it probably wasn't very clear. This stuff's not that hard. I think you can get it and it would be good to have this. So, so we're, we're spending one more hour on it or 40 minutes or so. And that before we move on. Okay. So let's refresh with the definitions now, because I'm pretty sure maybe you don't remember, by the way, interrupt me. If, if you have a question, you can just Turn your mic on and, and say stop or something. Stop. Okay. Um, so let's let's see the definition. So we say y n converges in probability to y. Now this doesn't have to do with these two examples. Well, it does, but I mean it's not the same y n. Um means that the limit, so I'm just writing this shorthand. We already did this, and it's on the videos too. It's all over the place in my life right now. So it's the probability that y n minus y is greater than epsilon has to be equal to zero. In other words, y n is converging to y. Y can be constants. Remember, y n can be constants too. Just think of constants as these simple random variables. Okay. Yeah, and this would be for any, like I leave this out a lot once you get used to this, for any epsilon greater than zero. So it has to be true even for very, very small epsilon. Okay, um, let's check the claims, for example, one and two, that they satisfy this claim, okay? So we're gonna check both cases for the convergence in probability. So example, one. All right. What do we do? Okay, yeah, right. So we want to look at the inside part here, right? And get a simplifying expression for that and then take the limit to infinity. Okay, so remember example one, u is uniform, zero, one, y, n is u plus u, n. So here I have u instead of y, but you get it. So, okay, so example one, we have probability, uh, absolute value, u n, sorry, y n, y n, y n minus u greater than epsilon. Let's reduce this. You see, it's really just these little steps. This is equal to the probability. What is yn minus u? Go ahead and if you want, go ahead and uh, just speak out. If you don't, it's okay. I'm just going to keep rolling. But what is yn minus u? u to the n. Yeah, u to the n. And it's positive, right? So I could just take the absolute values off. So this is the probability u to the n is greater than a small epsilon. Can I take the n through to both sides? Yep. You can do that. The inequalities maintain, right? Probability u is greater than epsilon to the one over n. And this is just one minus e epsilon to the one over n. And what's the limit of this? Well, the limit of this as n goes to infinity would be zero, right? So this goes to zero as, okay, let's even, let's write it out, so. limit n to infinity, one minus epsilon, one over n equals zero. So y n converges in probability to u. Makes sense? It's two things. So it's a little, it is a little more involved than like regular limits because you have the probability function and then you have sequences inside the, the thing. Um, so, okay, that's the first one. I think that makes sense. So example two, let's check this one for probability, for convergence and probability. So the probability, we call this Xn minus U. Um, yeah, greater than epsilon. Again, just simplify, what's Xn minus U? 
it's just that indicator function, right? The U comes off. So this is just equal to the probability. Again, I can take the absolute values off. This is always one or zero. Nth interval of U though, it's random. Um, probability this is greater than epsilon. We're gonna take the limit as N goes to infinity at the end. So rather than, um, try to write something fancy, which I don't didn't come up with a good expression for the endpoints of you. You can do all this, and it's nice, actually, too, but we're not doing this. So this is equal to, what is this? What is this probability? Can you give me um, an expression for this probability? Um, wait, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so let's say epsilon some small number or or any positive number. What's the probability that say let's use the quantity width of the nth interval, okay? So this is equal to the probability of what? That the width of the nth interval is greater than epsilon, right? Because all those numbers in the nth interval for all of those this will be true, the statement will be true, because this will be one, and assuming epsilon is less than one, this will be true. So this is just equal to the probability that u is in, u falls in, I don't know why I wrote falls in, but u is in nth interval. Make sense? If u is in the nth interval, then um, xn minus u is one, and that's going to be greater than some epsilon at least. So the condition, um, yeah. So for small epsilon, this is the probability. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to think about epsilon bigger than one. It doesn't matter anyway. Okay. So probability u falls in nth interval, but that's just the width of the nth interval. which let's do the same thing with the arrow, or we could just, let's do it the same way. It's okay to write words when you do math, right? So uh, li since limit n to infinity width of nth int equals zero, then we have xn converges in probability to u. Okay. I'm waiting for the delay. The the okay, yeah. Um, okay, good, good, good. Almost sure convergence, point wise convergence. Yeah. Okay. So uh let's check let's check those. First of all, let's read let's define it again. So the definition of almost sure convergence is we have yn converges. A S to Y say if the probability of the limit, the limits now taken inside the probability Y N minus Y. For some reason it's defined this way, but it's totally equivalent to write it the other way. I think I know why, but don't worry about it if you. So this should be equal to one, right? For any. Totally equivalent to write greater than, and also the equal sign, whether you write greater than equals or just greater than or just less than or less than equals, it's um, those are the same, right? Since it's arbitrary, it has to be true for any epsilon. You could or just argue, well, look, it's true. You have to, you could take epsilon over two, it's true. So who cares if it's all right? We're doing good. Okay, halfway through this part. Well, okay, so example one. Let's let's look at this. Now we said example one does converge a f. OK, so this time I want to actually look at the limit first and then figure out what the probability is of this limit. So limit n to infinity yn minus u 
again, this is just limit n to infinity u n. I can take the absolute value off. And this is just equal to, we did do this last time, but I feel like it is helping to do it again. This is zero if u falls in, if u is in here, all but one. And it's one if u equals one. Now here, this is maybe the deepest thing of these examples is you you have to realize, uh, you have to go here really to, to answer this limit question, right? You have to think about, you're sort of translating this into this. So let's let's actually write the step out. So, so probability that the limit n to infinity yn minus u less than epsilon, you're sort of translating at this sense, at this step, is equal to the probability that, um, well, basically, right? It's just this. So this is the translation. You, you, you need to check here and see uh, for what values of u this, this holds. So, so this is the probability u is less than one, right? So this is the probability u is less than one, you know, for any epsilon greater than zero, it has to be true for any epsilon greater than zero. So it has to be true for small epsilon. Um, this is the probability u is less than one and this is equal to one. So, uh, so yn goes to u as. Think of this is this is cool. This is where the limit really makes sense to me. It's it's easier to understand the limit with the probability. It's more like you want to think about Chebyshev and that stuff. With this stuff, you you can really think about like at every u, this is converging uh, to at every for every u, y n converges to u, except at one. And that's really what you have. And then you just translate it to, well, if that set where it doesn't converge has no probability, has measure zero, if you like that kind of language, then then um, then it converges almost surely, almost everywhere. It's called in analysis. OK, so. Um, all right, you ready? So the, for the last one. Example two. Limit uh, n to infinity. Um, xn minus u, right, is equal limit n to infinity 1 nth, nth interval u. And this is basically where we stopped. We said because as we go around the nth interval, this this is a sequence of numbers in here. Okay, u has fallen already. U has already been rolled. And now I am computing this sequence based on u. So I get 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, you know, something like that. And then the, you get more zeros, but you always get another one. You can prove this too, that you don't run out of time. You always come back and get another one. Um, so, uh, so this has no limit. This has no limit. And I can't say that, I mean, this oscillates. So this limit, this limit doesn't exist. Just write the words, you know, when you have a sequence that oscillates, it's usually best to explain it. So limit DNE sequence oscillates mostly hanging out at zero, but between zero and one infinitely often. You can use this little abbreviation to let people know you're in the math club. Okay, so it's, there will always be a one, so you will never find a, uh, you know, an n such that for all n bigger than n, this is less than epsilon. All right. All right, so conclusion, xn does not go to U A S. The set on which it goes to U is actually the null set. There are no points it goes to U, right? Not only does it not have measure zero, it has measure one. So the whole thing doesn't go to U. Okay, um, point wise, anyway, point wise, 
still the probability is getting small, right? Because that interval is getting smaller and smaller, but there's still uncountably many points and still every comes around. So every point still doesn't go. Okay. So that's the idea. Yeah. If I roll one U and I let, I compute this on and on, and I want to gamble and bet on whether UN is, um, is you is close to you or not, or like one off from you, I would probably bet it's, uh, it, it's close to you, right? If N is really big, because I'm probably not at that point picking the N that's right on the interval, but still it will always come back and there will always be a chance to lose no matter what UN is. Okay. I know it's a lot. It's a lot. Does it make sense? Did that explanation help a little? Yeah. At least I seem like I understand. Just just yeah. to clarify, it yeah, doesn't converge, yeah. right? What doesn't converge? It doesn't converge almost surely to you, XN? It de oh, right. Yeah, I didn't finish the... <laughs> I got too excited talking. All right. does not converge to you. Right. Yep. All right. All right. So the um, there's two limit theorems that go with these. I wanted to get to the SLLN, which we never got to. We, we did, talked about weak law in last semester, and... This is the one we just did without me telling you what it was. This is just Chebyshev's formula, basically. The okay, yeah, I should write what these are first. Okay, so um, let um, so now we want um, so this stands for weak law of large numbers. We want this to be IID with finite first and second moment. Um, notice if you know the second moment's finite and you know the first moment's finite, you know the variance is finite. So either way you want to write it's okay. But a lot of times that's what they mean by first and second moment. And that was why the like we needed the fourth one because we wanted the um we wanted the variance to we were talking about convergence of the variance, so we wanted the variance of the variance. So we needed the fourth moment to be finite there. Um Okay, so let these be IID with this, this, these uh, parameters here, expected value mu uh, finite and variance finite. Um, then Chebyshev says, then, so the weak law of large numbers says then um, Y and, do you want to tell me in our new language, what does it say? The nth sample mean, you remember? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So the nth sample mean converges in probability to mu. Proof. One line. Probability. Y n minus mu. Greater than epsilon. Is less than. Remember, e y. This is needed. For this next step, this is Chebyshev's inequality, and you could look this up if you're not sure about why this step is justified. I know I took me time to learn this stuff, so I understand you got to keep looking stuff up. So this is less than the variance of yn over epsilon squared. Sorry, I keep saying yn. I mean yn bar over epsilon squared, which is equal to sigma squared over n epsilon squared. And this goes to zero because I have finite variance. And as n gets big, this goes to variant to zero. So we have this result. So you can use this fancier language now. You could say, well, yes, yes, but of course the sample mean converges in probability to the to the population mean. This sounds smart, right? Okay, plus it is comforting to, to know that you understand it really at the ultimate level. Um, okay, so as long as you have that. Okay, now, but this is the thing. So we had done this several times and really the most useful thing I think about the weak law of large numbers is not so much the limit theorem, but it's Chebyshev's inequality. It's the fact that you know this exact bound here, you know, that you know this is true. This is This is the big result really. By the way, the weak law of large numbers, do you know when it was uh, stated or published? 
you, I know you could Google it. <laughs> All it's uh, 1690s, I think, or maybe 1710. But but the guy held on to it for 20 years. He didn't publish it because he had better things to do. No, he was still thinking about it. He was enjoying thinking about it. He told his children, who were also mathematicians, or his nephew, I think, it was um, discovered or first thought of by James Bernoulli. It was so early at the time for something like this that it was really amazing discovery. But um, Chebyshev didn't come along until the mid 1800s. So that's like 150 years later. So of course this result's cool, you know? It's got, it's got all that other stuff behind it. Um, all right, so this is the stuff I wanted to get to today, really. And all that was a preamble to get here. Um, repeat, right? But I feel like we wanted to know this. So strong law of large numbers. This was not, at least not proved until the early 1900s. So, okay, so suppose you have same setup, exact same setup, Y1, Y2, IID, exact same requirements, EY1 equals mu finite variance Y1 or EY1 squared equals equals sigma squared finite. Okay, then what's the result? The nth sample mean, right? You know what this means, right? It's the sample mean of the first n. What do you think? So the nth sample mean, what should this do? I give you a hint. It has to do with the previous 30 minutes. Which type of convergence was harder? Almost sure, right? The almost sure was harder. It, it, it actually implies the convergence in probability. But yes, it turns out the weak law of large numbers is eclipsed by the strong law of large numbers. Y and bar not only converges in probability, it converges point-wise almost everywhere or almost surely to, um, to mu. No proof given. The proof's very long. It's cool, though. It's not very long, but it's, it's long enough, okay? So um, it's deep, as you will see, because I do want to discuss this for a minute before we move on. No proof here, let's say. You can certainly find several proofs. If you're interested, let me know. There is no proof in in your book or really in the other book either because they rely on things that they don't prove so i don't consider that a full proof but i can give you resources it could be a good project for somebody somebody could totally do this in the class without using big fancy math too much but um it does it takes some analysis like some math 172 and some perseverance and then you can get there all right um so uh yeah, let's look at instead, I could look at this generally to show you the cool thing I want to show you, but let's just look at this example because everything's really in this example and um, we can, that I want to show you anyway about this and that I, and, and so let's simplify our space a little bit as much as we can. So say I have an infinite sequence of coin flips with a fair coin. So I have zeros and ones going on forever. Then the strong law of large numbers tells me what? Strong law. I'm used to writing social security. Strong law of large numbers. To what? What uh -huh. Yes, right. Wow. Now, what, how do you interpret this? Try to say it in words. What is this? What do you think this really means? We already had the weak law, right? So like that if we did a bunch of random Bernoulli zero ones and in R say we did like a million of them and took the average it would i mean every time i've ever done it it's always super close to 0.5 and that's because the probability is super high it's close to 
but that's basically i mean it's because of the whole thing the reason why this stuff works but you could also argue that's just the weak law of large numbers right you can't really see the difference between these there <clears throat> so what do you how do you interpret this this the s the strong law what is the sample space of this probability experiment let's say it that way because that's what we really did right and in, in all these examples it was like Okay, look here, um, for example, one, we, we find the limit of UN and I get this, but then I have to think there's that last step where you're thinking, well, U is uniform. So the probability it's in here is one, the probability. So you're, you're going back to the actual randomness of the problem and thinking about what the distribution is or what the, it's called the probability is. And, um, yeah, same here, right? We had the nth interval here, and we had to go back and think about what the probability is. It oscillates between zero and one, where? Everywhere. So in this case, it wasn't very hard. You didn't really have to think about the uniform much, but but you had it going everywhere in there. So, um, so here for this example, with these Bernoulli zeros and ones, what is the sample space? You have now you have a different thing, right? For one thing, you don't have a single uniform random variable or a single Bernoulli random variable that you're making a sequence out of. You have an infinite number, you have like an infinite, you have an infinite sequence, but you, you can think of it like an infinite vector or something, an infinite sequence of random variables. Yeah, you do. You have a sequence of random variables now. And each one has a pretty simple distribution. It's either one or zero with probability I have. So that's the sample space. So so let's write this down. So the sample the sample space of the experiment. And I know we're extending a little bit into stuff, you know, definitely beyond the course, somewhat just slightly. Um hard to make problems up about this, but but just hang with it. Um not much longer. The sample space um, is the, for this experiment, because I am talking about the limit, right? So I have to take an infinite number, um, is the set of all possible sequences infinite. of uh, ones and zeros. Okay, now let's list some. So here are some. So let's list sequence. All zeros, okay? Um, y hat n goes to zero, doesn't go to a half. Can you tell me another one that doesn't go to a half? Yeah, all ones. Um, doesn't go to a half. Plus, you could make up other kind of goofy ones, like you could have three zeros and a one. And you could say y n goes to a quarter. Agreed? So not every sequence goes to a half. The, the, the limiting uh, average doesn't go to a half for every sequence. Of course not. It goes to all the numbers. And there's there's an infinite way probably it goes to all the numbers. Well, except for the first two. Um, but maybe even those do too, right? Like, like you could have a finite number of zeros and then the rest all ones, and that would go to one. So so yeah, I think I think every number has an infinite number of sequences such that the uh, average goes to that number. But what can you surmise from SLLN? This is the big result to take away. We're not proving it. We're just stating it and sort of trying to see what's underneath instead of just writing 
little math formula and not thinking about what it means. So what does this say? That the more sequences we take, the closer it is to mu. Good try. That's a good try, but it wasn't really what I'm looking for, and I'm not really. I think I think it's it's I think even I think all the sequences you take are going to be close to mu, don't you? No, the more like this. If the first one is like a zero, the like the last one is one. The all in between, the all infinite in between, are like it's between zero and one. So like all of their sum is going to be like average. It's going to be in the middle. So there are a lot of sequences. It's not just zero and one, right? There are a lot that will not go to a half. No, talking about the Bernoulli one. Yeah, no, but I mean, I am too. I'm talking about the Bernoulli one half like full coin flip, even probability one zero. There are lot, uncountably many that will not go to, to one half. You agree? Because look, I could just take this one, like see every fourth one, make it one. What if I took every fifth one and made it one? All the others are zeros. That would go to one fifth, right? Every sixth one and made it one. But what if I... What if I took two and then, you know, go to two sevenths, I could go to anything and I could rearrange the order they're in. As long as I just specify for every seven, um, I need two ones and five zeros, you know, so that would go to two sevenths, right? Yeah, so we move the more sequences we take, mm -hmm. right, the closer it is going to be. Not the, the each one, of, but not the each one. Right. But this, so right so you're kind of still back in the weak law it's true right but but the strong law says it's talking about individual sequences really now right you're looking at does does each point converge to this thing or not so you have oh. to look at it yeah so this is the new thing right so this is good this is the insight you need to have and you look at it and you say does each point go to one half not each point, right? Not each point. Certainly not. You can everybody can list these, and there's an uncountably many number of them too. But what can what does the SLLN tell you? I'm not claiming to be able to prove it right here, <clears throat> but what does it say? It basically says that th it's this part, right? It's the A part really it's saying that all of these sequences taken the union of all of these sequences it still has zero probability so so um with probability one the sequence a random sequence will have a limiting um average equal to one half so it's just important to see that there are these other sequences that don't do that. And the interesting thing is that you can you can see there are all these other sequences, but they have no chance of happening. In in analysis, it's called they have measure zero. So um, so let's just say the subset. So we can break S in if we let let S be the sample space. Okay, so all infinite sequences. In this case, okay, I'm not going to write it out too fancy again. I would just want you to see this more than be able to use it too much, but it's important. We could write then S can be partitioned like this, N union NC, where uh, if, uh, let's say, little y is in N, then uh, y bar or the y bar N goes to one half. And if y is in nc, then y bar n does not go to one half. 
as n goes to infinity. And these are just regular sequ these are just regular sequences, examples in the sample space. So I don't need to write AS. I shouldn't write AS, right? These are just regular limits. Um, <clears throat> and then we know the probability of n equals what? From the SLL of n. Right? And probability and C also S L L N. You like it? Okay, we got a lot to do. I always overestimate, but um let's just keep going. So we'll keep going. You can think about it, read about it, but this is what I have. Uh, on this. Okay, new definition, last type of distribution. Suppose y1, y2, dot, 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 and y are, are random variables or possibly constants. No, are random variables. Are random variables. Are random variables. For this one, we want them to be random variables, I think. Y could be a constant, I think. Let's just leave it open like last time either. Then, Yn converges in distribution. This is the last one. So don't, um, to y, if the CDFs converge, if uh, the probability yn is less than little y converges to the probability y is less than little y as n goes to infinity. Again, this is just a regular limit as n goes to infinity at all y where uh, probability y less than or equal to y is continuous. If it's a continuous random variable, it will uh, it will always be true. Are you still there? Yeah, I just... Uh, Okay, if it's a continuous random variable, it will always be true. But um, if it's not continuous, then you got to watch that condition. Okay, maybe too much. All right, all right, all right, all right. So um, this is, let's let's just do an example. This is going to go a little faster. So we have one example. So suppose y1, y2, dot, 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 iid uniform 0, 1. Okay, A, if I take Y, I'm gonna call it YN, the nth order statistic, but really it means the max of the first N. Usually this means the nth order statistic in a sample. We're gonna make this be the largest of the first N. I guess this makes sense. It's, it's kind of uh, consistent with that definition too, right? So it's the max of the first N Ys. So this goes to, what do you well I'll leave it for you to guess b n if I take n and I multiply y minus y n by n itself then this converges in distribution to um something to an x to y say exponential one it's kind of interesting Okay, what do you think the yn goes to, the max goes to as I take more and more and more um, samples? One? Is anybody here? <laughs> Just making sure people. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you're here. Yep. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, no, I just sometimes it's back from the old days when uh, I used to have bad internet and I would sometimes be talking to myself. Um, 
bad internet. Okay, yeah, so this goes to one, right? Like it's sort of just intuitive, but we'll show it. So this converges to one in what way? Well, at least in probability, okay? So we're just gonna look at this. And this converges in distribution to uh, an exponential random variable. Let's do this now, not hard. A, I go to my definition, right? So I need the probability that the max of the first n minus one is greater than epsilon. This is just equal to, um, when will this be true? If y n is more than epsilon less than one, right? Y n can't be bigger than one. So this is the same as the probability y n, I don't need the absolute values now, is less than one minus epsilon. Uh, maybe I'd need the equality sign. It doesn't really matter, okay, because it's a uniform distribution. But if if you want, we could make a, put this in here, okay. All right. Um, anybody know what this is? What's the probability the max of the first n are less than or equal to one minus epsilon? Can we write this as a just a algebraic thing? with no P anymore. Remember these are independent. Are you getting tired? Just a little more, then we don't have to do anything. You don't have to see me for four days. I will make sure you don't see me. If I do go out, I will like where you won't know it's me. Mm, would it be zero? Or... Um, well, n could just be like five, right? And epsilon could be like a small number, like a tenth. I mean, that's you. you I don't think you think it's zero. We didn't mm -hmm. take the limit yet, right? Oh. Yeah, we just want the expression so we can take the limit. So what's the problem? The max the probability of the max, what's the probability one is one of them is less than one minus epsilon? Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, one I expect you to know the probability one is less than that, less than or equal to that. I, mean, I could see why you might be stuck on the max. What's the probability a, a uniform zero one is less than or equal to one minus epsilon? Right, it's just one minus epsilon, right? Are you here? Yeah, yeah anyway. <laughs> We're asleep. Okay, I'll just finish it for the recording if maybe. So the probability YN is less than, this means that all of them, maybe you're just thinking, that's fine. This means the probability all of them are less than, right? If the max is less than this, all of them have to be less than this. So it's one minus epsilon to the nth power, right? Agreed. And this goes to zero as n goes to. So that's the proof, okay? So yn goes to one. Okay, B. So this involves the CDFs, right? So I, I want to show that the CDF of 
the thing in the problem, n times 1 minus yn, is the same CDF as an exponential. So what is the CDF? So we compute the CDF of this, and then we take the limit, OK? So this is, again, I'll just solve for yn. So we get this is equal to the probability. Um, yeah, divide by n, right? Add yn to both sides, subtract. So I get the probability yn is greater than, I'm going to use the equal anyway, because it's, can, maybe I shouldn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if we want to make it so it's not going to worry you, this is the probability yn is greater than um, one minus little y over n. So let's say for the interesting stuff, right? Where, um, okay, and now greater than, I don't know, but I knew I could do it less than. So this is one minus the probability yn is less than or equal to one minus y over n which is equal to one minus, this is just equal to one minus y over n to the n. And what is this limit? This goes to, do you know this limit? This is e to the minus y, right? e to the minus y. Mm -hmm. So as n goes to infinity, you basically get an indeterminate form, one to the in infinity. But the one is being approached from below, and the limit is. Um, e to the minus y. Okay. Um, so, so right. So this is this, but what is this? This is just equal to the probability that like y exponential one is less than or equal to little y, as you can verify. Okay, so converges in distribution to y exponential one. The CDFs converge. The CDF converges to the other CDF. Any questions? OK. I go to these faculty meetings, and I just sometimes I sleep through them, and I just leave the thing on. It's OK. Um, OK, so I'm not saying you're sleeping. OK, so the central limit theorem then can be said in terms of more shortly and nicer in terms of this. So we have y1, y2, dot, 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 i, i, d, e, y, i, equal mu, less than infinity, variance, y, i. How do we say the central limit theorem in our new language, we could say y n bar minus mu over sigma over square root of n converges in distribution to Right? Are you guys still there? Yeah. Okay, good, thanks. Yes, I like it, I like the silence, it's okay, but uh, I just wanted to make sure. I was just getting anxious a little bit, like that people weren't there. <laughs> okay. Okay, is it a question?
You don't have to. No, I'm just absorbing everything. That's why. Okay, I'm good. Quiet. Yeah, I mean, I'm only doing like the two major theorems from all probability today, so it's um, it's a lot. But okay, yeah, thanks, thanks for just like, we're almost done. Okay, and then I do have the problem, but if if you don't want to do it, we can do that next time. Okay, little more, one more theorem. Um, we're not going to prove this one either. This is a Russian guy from the 19th century. Uh, Slutsky, his name is spelt like this, though, uh, with the U, like this, Slutsky, but it's pronounced Slutsky. It's like Victor Boot, the um, prisoner that the Russians traded for Brittany Griner. Um, it's spelled with a, it's an, a, a single letter, right, Diana? It's like Slutsky, like S L U. No, it's one letter. Right, it's one letter. It's this. But, uh... No, this is ooh. The tsa so is oh, it's ooh. Yeah, this is ooh. No, but that's it's right. It is. Okay. It is this. Okay. So yeah. Keep... So this is how you spell it, and like Victor Boot, I think, is also just the single ooh, right? Like this. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, really, I think it should be spelled like O U, <laughs> just so people say it right, because it's kind of not a nice word. So anyway, um. But it is spelled with a U traditionally, just like they misspell a lot of the Russian names. I think they don't make them spelled the right way that they're pronounced. So, okay, so Slutsky's theorem is the way most people will say it. But it, if you want to sound like you're, you know, Russian, you say Slutsky's theorem. Okay, so it says that um, if y n goes to y in distribution and um, x n goes to a constant in probability, then xn plus yn, there are different variants of this, but this is the one we need, goes to c plus y in distribution, and xn times yn goes to cy in distribution. OK. Um, Let's see how this is used. This gets us a, a nice thing. It's one page, less than a page of notes to finish the notes. So, um, so let's do just do an example of this. So we're not going to prove this. The proof's not that easy. It's not too bad, but you, um, it's in the other book, I think. But uh, we're not going to do it. So let's let uh, T n be equal to z over um, the square root of let's call it say xn over n, where xn is just equal to z1 squared plus zn squared. So in other words, and these are iid normal 0, 1. So in other words, xn is what kind of distribution? Chi squared with n degrees of freedom, right? And let's have z be um, independent and normal 0, 1. So, so this is a t random variable with n degrees of freedom. It has a t distribution with n degrees of freedom. And now let's take the limit as n goes to infinity. So xn, so, right. So what is the... Um, What is what does xn over n go to and why? Xn over n, well, it's the sum of z uh, standard normal squared, independent standard normal squared, averaged divided by n. So this converges in probability. It even goes almost surely, right? But certainly in probability too, but even almost surely, also almost surely. From the law of large numbers. If you don't want to specify, you can just write this. Um, but this goes to e of z i squared, right? Which is equal to one. You can check. You could do this, right? You can do this. So this is from 217. That if you take a standard normal and you square it, the expected value is one. 
Um, okay, and then Z is just a constant, so it's not going anywhere in distribution. So Tn converges in distribution to um, one over um, one, right? This also goes to one because of the limit loss. Here, I'm kind of rushing. I know we're getting to the end and I don't want to rush. So let me just um, make this a little more clear. First of all, we'll just write this like this. But this is even true from the strong law. Because we know S, we always want to say this now when we know we have it. We know this implies the weak law. Okay, so this goes to one, right? This is like an average of a sum of squared normals. And so from the limit laws last time, if I take one over the square root of Xn over N, this goes also in probability to one. So Tn converges to one times Z uh, which is normal zero one. The z is just a constant, so it doesn't it stays itself. It keeps the same distribution as a normal zero one. Okay, here's here's the result though. So t, as you take more and more samples, more and more degrees of freedom approaches the standard normal. Okay, if we have last thing y one y two dot 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 i i d first second and fourth finite moments. Then we saw last time, then the variance of Sn squared goes to zero and Sn goes to sigma. Yeah, let's make it clear E yi equal mu, variance yi equals sigma squared. Then, here's the result of yn this can be written as Let's write it like this, sigma over Sn times since from the limit laws and the fact that Sn converges in probability to, I didn't write it, to sigma. This part goes to one in probability, right? Also, the CLT, which we didn't prove, but we wrote again. So this goes in distribution to normal zero one. So Slutsky implies that this, which is a very common estimator for our sample mean, it does converge in distribution to a standard normal. If I take enough samples. We got through it. It took two lectures to do it, but we got through it. Um, all the stuff I wanted to do on this stuff for 9.3. So there was a problem um, that I thought we could do, but um, we won't have much time, but just let me tell you which one it is maybe, and then uh, you can look at it for next time. So let me just make sure, uh, let me share my screen. I think I have it here.
Yes, let me get to the right page first. Oh my God. Okay, hold on, almost there. I know I can write this up, but I feel like if I show it to you, maybe just write it down and maybe we can do it um, next time. All right, yeah, so uh, let me share the screen here. Okay, yeah, so in the Wackerly, oh my God. Yeah, okay, that's nice. I got you all down there like you're on a game show or something. Um, yeah, at the, at the end of 9.3, I was thinking we could do this one, right? This is the pooled variance for two populations here. As long as I'm assuming they have the same variance, sigma squared, we can show that the pooled population is a consistent estimator. It converges to sigma squared in probability. It's cool. It shows a lot of these things. It's not that cool. It's pretty straightforward, actually, but it's cool that we can do it now and that you're actually doing stuff like this, this is good stuff. Um, and also, there's just some other nice problems. So I would go to after all these numeric things, because I'll give you plenty of that anyway, and just maybe start at 9.15 and and look at the look at some of these. But this is the one I think maybe we can do this next time or I'll put it in the next homework. I'll just put it in the next homework too so we have it logged there. But if you wanted to think about it and to exercise from today's class, you could try to do 918. It involves some of these ideas. There's other stuff. I think you can go all the way, do all of these things. There is almost nothing you should, we did not cover here. Um, Kind of cool. But of course you don't have to. I know you're busy and, and stuff. So I will put other stuff uh, in the next homework. Yeah, next time we start this next topic, which is so cool, it's definitely new. You have not seen this, I don't believe. It's this idea that um, certain statistics eclipse all everything else, basically. Like if you know one statistic about the population, you don't really need to know anything else. So um, very useful, very useful in practice too. All right, that's all I got. I'm going to um, stop recording. Does anybody have a question before we stop? Uh, I have a question, but not on the material about the, like, how do you expect us to submit the homework tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, you Look, I'm not going to even be there till Monday morning. I don't plan to go. Um, you can slide it under the door anytime but, or in the mailbox before Monday morning. Or if you want to get it off your plate, you can just put it, yeah, just go over the weekend, put it under the door or something. Or you can, it's safe, or you can um, email it to me if you want. I mean, there are not that many of you. I don't mind if you want to do an electric, electronic uh, submission. That's fine. Just send it over email. Okay, Monday morning's the new, new due date, let's just say. I'm I'm going to still post something. It will be due, but it won't be due until like for a while, like three weeks or, you know, the, the end of the first week back from break. I need a few more days. I'm still working on it. So, and um, yeah, there will be like some kind of project. Like I said, I'll try to have that like some, some, and I have a surprise for us too on Thursday. So next week. So um, yeah, we'll have a, I'll, so I'll get more organized about the project and thing. I feel like we're doing fine because we needed to do all this anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and you know, the project doesn't, it doesn't have to be super big scope or anything or involve a lot of presentational work. It's more about just doing one thing um, that no one else is doing or that maybe pairs or something and then sort of presenting it. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do tonight? I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what just are you going to do tonight? Around.
I don't, I'm like I said, I mean, I have big plans for the break and stuff, but tonight I'm really just happy to not have to go anywhere. And uh, what are the break plans? Hiking with my kid, winter hiking with That's my cool. 31 year old. That's cool. Yeah. For a while, yeah. like I, when their kids are little, you know, like you're, you're a little impatient, you want them to do more and you're like, I want to do more. And then they get to the point where there's so much more athletic than you and they can do so much more. And now we're about the same because he doesn't do very much. So, and I'm actually <laughs> like out doing it by myself a lot. And so he's just like smoking cigarettes and stuff like that. So we're about the same level. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah, no, it's going to be good. Just hang out, cook a little. Get caught up. You guys got plans? <laughs> Want to watch some videos? YouTube videos? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe someday though, plan. we could have a little thing like that where we share music with each other. <laughs> kind of like a team building thing. Anybody got anything else? Uh, homework. homework? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was in, um, I'll tell you a story. Do you want to hear a story? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so I was in the coffee. What's it called? The um, the something bean on Highland Ave yesterday. You know where that is? The no. cafe across from Soul Proprietor over by WPI, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was in there last night getting a coffee. And this guy comes up behind me. And he was so close to me. And I turned around and looked and he kind of startled me a little. And he had a hat that said Brooklyn on. I said, oh, I used to live there. And then he said, um, he said, started talking to me, you know, and I turned out he, he had no money and he wanted a coffee or something. Like that. And, um, and, but he didn't ask right away for a coffee. Or, so he, he started talking, he goes, what? So we had a nice talk. He was very nice and everything. And then he goes, um, so what do you, what did you do? What was your day like? And I go, well, I just got off from work and he wasn't happy with that answer. And and I go, mathematics. And he goes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great answer. I, I said, what do you want? I'll buy you a coffee like that. So he knew it. He knew it was mathematics. It's so funny. Exactly. With a little anger and stuff. It was perfect. All right. That's it. That's all I got. Go entertain yourselves. I'll see you later. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Okay, you too, guys. Yep. Bye-bye. Uh, oh, if you want to stay on, you can. But... Oh, I was just going to say, if I have any questions about the homework, would it be okay if I email you about that? I'm just... Are yeah, just... absolutely. Um, I... Oh, I have my hand. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't. I couldn't figure out how to stop recording. Let me just... Um... Yeah, let me just uh what the hell? I don't I don't know. Like I've um I've totally become idiotic about this. Like this don't is don't you just click recorded. the red button? Oh, at yeah, the top? Yeah, yeah. What the hell? Did it stop sharing yet? No. No. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's because I'm not manipulating the mouse, right? Ah, now stop recording.